The Fidelio Incident. An interesting title. At first I misread it as The Fellatio Incident, which would have made a totally different story. But anyway, let's take a look at The Fidelio Incident, a Cold as Ice adventure game made by Act 3 Games. Story. You're flying in a plane, together with your wife, crossing over some frozen island before nature bites you in the ass and you crash the plane. During the crash, you become separated from your wife Leonor, who gets trapped in the wreckage on top of a mountain and it's up to you to endure the harsh environment long enough to rescue her and to find a way to escape. Graphics. As you can see, the game looks quite good and features some pretty detailed textures and environments. The Fidelio incident has a good amount of diversity in its locales, coupled with a few surrealistic places that give the game some more flavor, so to speak. Impressive effects too, with good lighting effects and particle effects. When you travel through an icy cave, the reflections and sound effects really give that chilly vibe of actually being there, so I feel the graphics do an overall good job of pulling you into its cold and harsh world. Gameplay. The actual gameplay in this game is very simple. You walk, you interact with the mouse button. That's it. There is no inventory and there's only a kept journal of all the notes you collect during your adventure. So the first part of the game focuses on fighting hypothermia whilst you scavenge around looking for a means to get closer to the crashed airplane to rescue your unfortunate wife. To regain body temperature you must seek out fire or other sources of heat. Failing to do so, you quickly freeze to death. This style of gameplay pretty much limits your exploration options, but thankfully the game is quite forgiving in that regard with nice autosaves. Because of this, the exploration is almost without real risk of dying, which makes the game flow better when it comes to its narration, but it does remove somewhat of a challenge, making this game more like an interactive movie rather than a traditional game. The simplicity of puzzles also goes a long way in making this more like a movie, and it's kind of a stretch to even call it puzzles, since it's more like open a valve to unlock a new pathway, rinse and repeat. All the while there are notes scattered everywhere that provide some much needed interesting story exposition to keep you going and invested into the story. The environments gradually change and the transitions are done quite well with some clever and discreet loading in between the areas. This gives the overall impression the game has no loading at all, which is always a good thing and goes a long way in keeping you immersed. I'd say the voice acting is also surprisingly well done for an indie game especially, with good emotional delivery at appropriate moments. I really felt bad for both Stanley and Leonor and wanted to save her no matter the cost. Because of the excellent voice acting during the game, I felt very invested into the story and that feeling wouldn't have been as strong had the voice acting been mediocre and forgettable. Overall, I'd say the Fidelio incident has a very nice mix of drama, exploration, mystery and even some minor spooky elements. In any case, the Fidelio incident proves that games can be a very effective storytelling platform. Overall score. The good. Graphics. Soundtrack. Storytelling. Voice acting. The bad. Music can get repetitive. Short. The game can be finished in one session. The game is around two to three hours, give or take. Closing words. The game reminds me somewhat of Firewatch with the way the game is set up to tell an interactive story. It certainly is somewhat of an emotional roller coaster. From beginning to end, things really aren't close to what they seem to be at face value and the mystery surrounding the main character's past is certainly enticing enough to uncover. Is it worth it? I'm honestly having a hard time with this question. It's kind of worth it for the experience alone, but since the game is so short and has no replay value whatsoever, it might still be a bit too expensive at 15 euros. Currently it's on sale for 10 euros and that seems a more reasonable price for the overall experience. Given the game's simplicity and length, I'd say the game can be pretty much compared with a movie ticket in terms of price, length and experience. Thanks for watching, my name is Serdachi and I wish you, as usual, a fantastically cool and chilly day.